It's the time for the package from China. Let's go. Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Retroid 5 Plus, the 16 bit Super Famicom SNES Pocket. And this is absolutely a beast when it comes to playing. This is maybe also the best like way you can play your original Super NES games on the go, but this thing has even more cool features packed in. <laughs> on the box we have two controllers because yep this thing is a hybrid machine you can even plug this into your hdmi and play your super famicom games also that way like a game system the device also supports the converter they are selling separately for famicom games nes mega drive game with fonts and game boy color and there they are, the converters I recently also picked up with this 7 inch of a beast of a machine. Yeah, there was a little bit of a thing, it's like I couldn't really find every single one of them. So what is all up with this? So what you can do basically is like getting converters. This version is for the Game Boy Classic. Then we're having the one, I think this is the one for the normal NES games. Yep, for the NES games, this thing is absolutely like gigantic. Come with it, like give you a quick look where you can see like this. Oh man, it's going to be like a clunky situation. And then we're having here the one for the Famicom games. And this is a different story. So basically what you can do, yeah, we don't have the option to plug in controllers like we had with some of the portable devices. We have an adapter, I tested it out and it works like a charm. So that's pretty damn cool. We can even use original controllers. Well, what are we actually going to get in the box? We're going to get ourselves like the toilet paper metal, but not a lot of explanations. Like that's it. Okay, now we're having the micro USB cable for charging. And of course two controllers, because this thing also even came with two wireless controllers. And I can tell you, even like filling through the plastic, I can tell you this is a very nice quality controller. Absolutely, I love it. Like, we do have like the different configuration when it comes to the buttons over here. Than we have seen with the previous model. But nevertheless, I, I must say that's even a good thing. We can even feel that absolutely great. So controllers, absolutely a good go. Okay, then we're having the system itself, and I can tell, oh man, this thing is absolutely beast. It's a gigantic, but let's take a close look at that later. For now, I can tell you this thing has a very nice, comfortable grip. Then we're having the piece of plastic where we can basically dock this thing in. Let's remove this plastic. And then we're having the power supply that we need to charge, just a typical 5 volt charger. Yep, nothing special. And then, of course, we're having a very long HDMI cable. But it's time to take a close look at this great, very nice looking handheld, or in other words, the Super NES Beast, because this thing is huge. Beautiful display, or whenever it's like a very nice display. So is it super comfortable? Yeah, that is a little bit debatable, of course. We're having the D-pad. The D-pad does have like a very nice curve to it. It's not a little bit filthy, don't know why. There's a brand new product. Like then we're having two buttons over here, one for the brightness and the reset, and the buttons of the Famicom are like okay. They have more space than normal controller. Just your typical long travel membranes. Select and start over here. At the bottom, we're going to get ourselves even a region switch. This is the connection for the, let's say the external controllers that you can basically plug in here. Then over here, SPS ratio, an option not every single handheld has. And of course, the on and off switch over here. At that, we're going to find a micro USB with an LED for indication if it's still charging. Then we're going to go over here, the HDMI out, that's a normal HDMI port, and of course, the cartridge slot. If you're going to power it on, nothing will happen, or in other words, like there is no games built inside this machine. So you need to implement a game. The first thing I've noticed, like, does it even have an indication how far your battery is full? I think it's pretty damn cool. About the batteries, how many batteries do we have? <laughs> we do even have like four freaking batteries. So like they're giving this thing the maximum way to play. And they have like these brandless things going on. In total, we're having like 2000 milliamp for each battery. So we're having like a total of freaking like 8000 milliamp. And it will give you a couple of hours of play time. This is just your typical 800, 650 batteries. So if these things have problems, you can just buy new ones and replace them. I do know like there is like a lot of like fake ones going on. So take consideration if you're going to get one, get a good brand. They will ask a little bit more, but you will have like a way better quality. But nevertheless, let's boot it up and let's play some games. Something I just need to point out that this thing comes with some excellent audio quality. Not like it's superb, but it is good enough. We have like most of the time like one speaker, it sounds like 5 out of 10. This thing sounds great. Also the volume control is here at the shoulder button. So if you want to play and just adjust it very quickly, you can do it fairly easy. Okay, so let's get the screen protector off. And let's play some Starwing. 
Okay, so let's play a little bit of a training stage of Starwing. And the thing is, like what I've noticing with the audio, even the high, sounds absolutely amazing. So let's get into the training mode. And I will show you that we don't have any problems whatsoever. I don't see any weird glitching going on over here. Let's switch to the wide screen. You can just do that in game. The panel they are using is absolutely not an IPS panel. So take consideration if you're going to use it in a different angle, you're not going to get yourself like the best image. So for the price, I wish they would improve that in the next version. All right, next up, let's go by the normal and special ratio. Another thing I noticed with, let's say, previous games combined with other, like, say, portable devices that we have, like, very bad shoulder buttons. They are, like, super sensitive. So let's see how that's going to be working out with this. So we actually need to press them like a normal controller. I've got something for you. Oh, just missed the dude. That's missed the dude. A card which I just needed to test out is the Super Retro Games. This is a card which so far I know you cannot really buy it on AliExpress. You need to get it with your Super NES HDMI system. It does come with some problems and some of the games will have some minor glitches whatsoever. But when you're actually going to play it, it will run just fine. Here you can see like it's glitching all up. I don't know why this is. Also the volume sounds not loud at all. Even with maximum volume. <laughs> All right, let's see how the gameplay in general is. But we can see like it does have like absolutely great performance when it comes to the gameplay itself. No problems there. But again, the cartridge cannot be bought so far, I know. But it doesn't matter what I'm throwing at this thing. Everything seems to be working just fine when it comes to original game cartridges. Of course, the other one, the NES game system was, or the NES cartridge is not an official game. So I was not surprised it had issues. All right. I'm getting my ass kicked over here. But also, Dever Drive will work just fine if you're going to get yourself like one from AliExpress or another one. Yeah, that's a very cool thing with these, let's say, devices that you can just slap a cartridge in and play every single game that you want to. All right, so the next thing that we're going to try out is the Super Famicom, I mean Famicom part. And then we're going to see if it's going to be actually like playable. No problem whatsoever with this game. It does like look kind of stupid when it comes to all of these adapters. Yep, no problem whatsoever. But I do notice like the audio level is not that great. Woohoo! Stretch to the maximum level. And how can you make it even more bigger? Yep, with this freaking NES cartridge. Look at this, how long it begets. <laughs> oh boy, this is absolutely really wicked. Okay, so let's see if it's going to be booting up the first time or do I need to clean everything up? Because that is a thing that I don't really like about the cartridges. You have so much and multiple cartridges. Oh crap. All right, so what is interesting, we do have even an option for AV out with this. So that's kind of cool. And then we having, yeah, the problem with the cartridge. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this construction. I noticed the connector is not exactly centered in the middle. So if you're going to put in the cartridge, you need to wiggle around to get it in place. So, now it does the wiggle. Okay, so we're running on turbo mode and that's because I think I'm using the different setting. No. 
It doesn't matter how I'm going to set it. It's a Paul game, so it needs to be normally slower. Let's turn it off and on again. Whoa. Okay. Let's do it in different aspect ratio. Let's do it, turn it on and off. Oh, there we go. So, it seems to be working just fine. The reason there's fave files on this, this, this game is pretty damn cool. But again, like the volume is quite low compared with the original Super NES games. I think it's very cool. You can even wiggle it around because it's so tightened up in the machine itself, but also in the adapter, you can just play it without any problem. Oh yeah, the sword guy, absolutely my favorite. There we go. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put it in a different express ratio. So it doesn't make any weird thing going on. Okay, the Super Game Boy just wanted to do like a weird thing with a multi-game card. Let's boot it up. Let's see if it's going to be working. Yep, no problem whatsoever. But earlier, you can just hear that the audio is so much louder now. Mm. Whether they have some issues with this, let's say, adapter combination with some games on some, let's say, handhelds from AliExpress. We don't have any issues whatsoever with this, so that's pretty cool. Next up, the extension converter for Game Boy. Let's see what happens if we're going to put in a Game Boy Color game. That seems to be booting up without any problem. Okay. So I just really curious if it was going to be supporting Game Boy Color as well, and it does indeed. So that is absolutely amazing in my opinion. Okay, so next up, let's try the same game again, but this time I'm going to use the extension converter Game Boy. Still, I have the idea that this through these, like say, adapters, they sound slightly different. Another thing is pretty damn cool. We have like all of the colors in the game. But the other adapter we didn't have it because it was an original Game Boy or Super Game Boy. So the extensions are pretty damn cool, but it looks kind of cool and kind of weird. So let's talk about the capabilities when it comes to like putting this thing on the television. We have this piece of plastic that you basically need to click inside of here. It can be falling out fairly easy, so you need to take consideration. There's no magnets whatsoever or any screw that's holding it in place. But basically what you can do is like put it inside of your television and use this thing like a game console. I think it's pretty cool while turning it on. It will, it's kind of weird, like it still shows no screen on the main display, but we will still have audio. It's kind of weird. But doesn't matter. Let's play some games. Let's hook up the adapter itself and let's try the wireless controllers. The biggest downside to having dual audio is that there is absolutely like a tiny lag between the system itself and not with playing the games, but especially when it comes to the audio. Okay, so let's plug this thing and control the port number one. And let's boot up the game. Let's see if it's going to be recognizing the controller. Ah, there we go. So that part seems to be working just fine. So I think that's one of those very cool features this thing actually has. They can play your games, not only on the go, but just also on the screen. But there's another particular thing I also noticed with this device. So this thing, what I understand of, is basically signaling out 720p. But what I do notice beside the HDMI connection is very stable, but it's also very colorful. And that is very particularly interesting because I personally never seen it before when it comes to these plug and play devices. I think it's a very cool thing to have in your collection, in my opinion, just if you want to play some Super NES and just want to have like a different way to play. And I mean like when you're looking at an HDMI system, this is a pretty damn cool solution. So that I do find it very strange to bring this, such a huge device with you on the go. It does make sense having this as a game system. The very strange thing with this device is that we do have like a very, let's say, weird looking yellow line over here. And it doesn't even matter which, let's say, settings you're having, it will always appear. So if you're going to set it to a different region, nothing seems to be f working out. Nope. The yellow line is still visible. 
Let's talk about the wireless controller that came with it. I already mentioned that these things play absolutely amazing when it comes to the feel. Just play a fighting game, just check out the D-pad. They work on two AAA batteries and there is no like upgrade possible when it comes to like a recharge of batteries, but it doesn't matter. Another thing is quite interesting, we have like player one and also says player two, so we can just really swap them out. So let's do a quick gameplay with some Fatal Fury, just to see how actually great the controller will play. Still a little bit of bummer about the yellow line. I find it also very annoying that they didn't fix stuff like this. It was not that visible when it comes to the previous game we tested. All right, so let's see. So the D-pad is great. Not only it, the touch is great, but also the way how it plays. But let's talk about the Famicom and all the other adapters, because this one does have even the option for an AV out. So I wonder what happens if you're going to plug in the HDMI and also the AV out. We don't have any display going on when it comes to the system itself, but oh yeah, we have like the option to play with two screens at the same time. That is some pretty wicked shizzle going on here. I just wanted to say it's like when you're looking at the AV out signal, it's more especially when you want to play this on CRT of course. The HDMI signal looks so much more sharper than the AV. And also, when it comes to XPS ratio, that option doesn't work when you're using the AV out through the adapter itself. So yeah, absolutely one wicked way to play. Just a quick comparison when it comes to the two signals. It's such a wicked way to play, I can tell you that. I think this is just actually one of the best like portable Super NES's I've played. Unfortunately, the downside I think is like we don't have like a beautiful IPS display that would make this thing even better than it already is. The only flaw I could find was the yellow line when using HDMI. I couldn't fix it with, an, let's say, with a similar game, not with the settings underneath. It has XPS ratio, all kinds of cool features that you're missing out with a lot of the other devices. Even the option to buy yourself like an extra, yeah, converter. And also this one even works with Game Boy and Game Boy Classic. Let me know in the comments what you think of this, would you consider buying it. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it would be great to see you in the next video.